Okay, so I've started booting to get the next session going. So here's the STDM login screen. And we're back, ready to compile some more. So I'm just going to get the uh, spreadsheet up. Okay, so the last thing we did was NTP. The clock is correct now. So, and over an hour has passed since I last did that. So, there shouldn't be any problems or any issues. Um, yeah, now I've got to reinstall this pin entry because I've got that to be reinstalled after KDE and a few other packages by the looks of it. So let's look for that and do that next. And then we'll be finally clear of all the backlog of rebuildables. So it looks like Emacs is an option if you use that. You can install that. But apart from that, oh, it was KDE Frameworks it needed. That's all it was. So I could have possibly done this earlier. So pin entry. So we've got some options here to add in. Inside Emacs default is no. Enable pin entry QT. So yes, we want that. Stick it, stick it in explicitly, like I say, it, it makes, if you're reading this, like watching a video, for example, is a good case. You can see that explicitly it will be compiled in for QT. If I left it out, you'd have to either know or read the documentation or maybe the BLFS book and that, that default could change over time. But by um, explicitly mentioning settings that you'd want, then there's no ambiguity about how the package is going to be compiled. So let's put that in. Uh, GNOME default is, yes, yeah, actually it uses GCR for the pin entry dialog. Okay, well we've got GNOME, so let's stick this in. And pin entry default is maybe, so I guess that means it might install it depending on what other packages you might have installed already. So we've got Emacs, no, EFL, no, QT4, no, TQT, W32, no. So that's okay. Let's build that. And install it. That's done. So that's now rebuilt. So go back to the spreadsheet delete those rows and I'll just put in that it's been rebuilt right so now we can carry on with the bigger packages so we're going to start with uh, where I can find them Is it after this lot? Oh, I skipped. Oh, yes, this is X software. So, Office programs. Abbey Word is a um, word processor. So, let's have a go at installing that. What dependencies we need? G Office. And that's got all its dependencies in. So, this shouldn't take too long at all. Delete that. Oh, I've got the 12. Oh, okay. Why well, some of these have changed to 20, uh, 10 points? Let's go up to 1000. Set that to 20. It should be the whole spreadsheet I thought I'd set. Let's do that again. 20. Right. So 
select that again. G Office and start downloading. So make a figure out there's no extra options that we're interested in. And run some tests. And install. And I believe this is just libraries that Abbey Word and uh, Numeric use. Yeah. So that's GOffice done. Now we need WV. It's for in reading a, a MS Word document. So let's fetch that. Taking its time. Paste that in. Right, IP address can't be found. Does that mean my internet has decided to go down? Let's just check it. No, it stood up. So it looks like there's a problem with the actual link of that file. So what I'll do again is to fetch the name of the archive. Oh, is that gun? No, it hasn't. And I'll search for it on the internet. Oh, what's happened here? Oh. It's because it thinks it's an address, so I'll put FTP and the file name. And mirror service, that should do. Uh, let's see if we can find. Oh no, it's taken us to. GCC, uh, let's put OS L is it, I think. Oh, is that it there? OS USL, that's, that's the one. Oregon State University, I don't know what the OSL stands for. Yep, this is the one. So if we look for WV, there it is there, and that's only got version 129, what version do we need? 129, so that's fine, let's download that, save the file, and I'll keep that open in case I have problems again, I'll now, oh, let's tidy this up, Do an MD5 sum on WV just to make sure it is valid. And oh, I've closed, closed the tab down, haven't I? Uh, DBCC it starts, yep, and 73F7 it ends, so that looks good. So there's no options with this, just compile it. And install and that's done so that's okay let me put this all the way back here 
Um, I'm not sure that's for. I'll leave it for the moment. So that's uh, WV done. Now we should be able to install Abbey Word. So let's download the packages. It's not going to work either if the website is down. Alright, let's look for it here. So back to parent directory. Yeah, looks like maybe that website's either down or been pulled. So, Control F, Abbey Word, there it is there. And we want, I presume it's going to be the latest version, version 305. And Abbey Word Docs 302. So, Abbey Word 305 is that one. And Save that, Abbey Word Docs 302, and save that. Okay, so let's extract Abbey Word 305. And it says to enable many of the optional dependencies, review the information from Configure Help. For the necessary switches, you must pass the Configure switch. So let's do the set command that's here first of all. And what I'll do is run configure first to see what, if it comes up with a status report at the end, which might give us some indications as to the kind of switches we might want to set up. Okay, yes it has, so let's have a look, menu button, no, so we might want to turn that on, spell checking we we'll probably want to turn on, clip art template, so there are some options to um, add on, so let's do help this time, uh, let's take a copy of that. get uh, in fact you can right click these and add them to the favorites so they're available right at the front uh, add to favorites and I'll add that one as well it should appear here yep there they are uh, but I don't want the calculation spreadsheet I want that one okay so if I paste that into there and now do the help. So optional packages, optional features, that's what we want. So there's some plugins here to enable plugin support. Oops. So I don't really recognize, oh, latex, I suppose, is one thing we could add in. So I think what I'll do is, let's go to the bottom here, recall the config command. Oh, it's just a plain one. I'll copy that. I'm going to paste that into here and build it up in this document. Uh, as long as it didn't start changing the formatting. Um, so enable plugins equals and then it says to use quotes yeah those quotes are going to be a problem I think uh, so let's try latex because we've got that Grammar, would that be a grammar checker, I guess? Grammar, let's try it. EPUB, I don't know if that'll work. We can try it. 
All right, I don't know why my mouse is designed to play up today. Uh, open documents should work. The only reason these wouldn't work if there isn't plugins for them. RSVG we've got. BMP should be supported. Uh, PDF should be. Wikipedia, I don't know. Garble Matthew, command, sign, GIMP. We've installed. Uh, MS Write, I wonder if that's that plugin we just installed, WV. Let's try that. Paint, don't know, might do. Um, XSLFO, I think that's a plugin to read Microsoft spreadsheets, so I'm not aware that we've installed everything for that. Like I said, I'm not sure whether these are plugins that will just be built based on code that Abby Word has got or not. I don't know. Uh, Docbook we've got, and K Word we may have. So let's oops, try that. Uh, what else we've got? Enable built-in plugins. Oh, to link statically. Enable menu button. So that's the first one. Menu button instead of menu bar. So is it, I wonder if that's like a hamburger bar instead of a menu bar. Now I actually prefer the menu bars rather than buttons. So I'm going to leave that off. Um, do not include spell checking support. Well, spell checking came up with no, so I wonder if I could put in an able spell there. Enable spell. Status bar, that's included. Emacs haven't got. Phi key binding. So that might be. Oh, that's included. Clip art is not included, so let's add that in. And templates, they could be useful. All right, as you can see, the word. Um, actually, I don't know why I'm doing this in here. We should have um, something like Kate or Kwrite installed. Yeah. What's happened there? Start Kate, no arguments. Okay, so it looks like maybe it hasn't been installed. Might be one of those optional optional um, programs. Perhaps that's one we should have installed then. Um, Yes, looks like it's not there. I wonder if I should take a pause and actually install that. Because uh, it would be very useful rather than risking using the word processor. Um, K frameworks. Further KDE packages. Let's do that there. I need to go to this web page. Let's get a new tab as well. Uh, let's look for K right first. Oops. Right, so that's not there. So you'd have thought that would be built in. Neither is Kate actually. Oh, yes, there it is. So did I miss that? K right is not there, but Kate is. Yeah, there it is. I don't know why K uh, yeah K right's not found. Unless it's been dropped now. I know they've been improving K right over over the years. Um, so let's download that. K 
Kate, sorry. Kate. And go back for the instructions. Let's see if there's any dependencies, although I couldn't really make head and tail of the output of it. Oh, it looks like. Now that does look a bit different, I think. It's not saying that anything's missing. So let's put these commands in to build Kate. And the targets have been specified. Five packages have been found. Oh, so why isn't that working? Oh, and then it does seem to have worked. Oh, make. I don't understand this. Oh, is it this? Needed for building Kate unless GWC is in the system. Oops. We've got that. So the following optional packages have been found. The following option required packages have been found. Yeah, I don't understand this. Um, so there's nothing written to the build directory either. And we've got KF5 set, haven't we? Yeah. There has to be another dependency missing. Configuring done, generating done, build files being written to. Yeah, that's what I didn't understand. It's um, running it in the build directory, but CMake correctly points to the parent directory, but then Make says no build files are found. So I've gone back to the parent directory outside of the build, and it's working. It's building, so I'm not quite sure how that works. Oh, I wonder if it's because I run CMake on the Kate directory. Let me try that. That might be what I've done wrong. So let's extract Kate again. Let me make the build, CD build. So let's run that again. Oh. MV build into the Kate directory, CD Kate, and then build, and then rerun that. Oh yeah, I wonder, no, that does look the same actually, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it has created stuff. I wonder if running that in the Kate directory is where it's created some of the build directories. But it does say to run that from the top of the source tree. I wonder if that should be dot dot here. Yeah, that's come up with everything there. 
Um, let's clear the build directory again. Yeah, that has written stuff. So I think that's what's confusing things. By running that in the source tree, it's creating the package to build as if it's in the source tree but without the build. Now that I've changed the build and run that, it's created some files which obviously this CMake command uses. So maybe that needs to explain, be explained a bit more in the book. So I'll take it if I now run uh, just CMake to actually configure it to build. It's done because it's obviously done a lot of the work. And now I'll run make it will build. Yes, it does. So that's that's confusing the build process by running that command there. Right, so that's sorted that out. I wonder how long it takes for me to forget that. I'm bound to not remember that next time if I ever build these packages again. Right, so that's built, and I'll install that now. Okay, let's tidy that up. And I'll put that in the spreadsheet as well. So I'll insert that there. Okay, it's gone again. shut that down and that one hopefully won't need any other packages so if I go back to writer I'll copy this bring up Kate yeah it's coming up different now so if I well, let's test it for yeah it should be right it's got an icon next to it Add that to the favorites that's better so now if I do new I can paste that in there I'll change the quotes because they looked wrong. They might actually, be, yeah, they are wrong. The, the quotes from the keyboard are exactly vertical, whereas the quotes from um, writer are um, at an angle. They're oblique. And it looks like, yeah, that's been converted again to a single hyphen, single longer hyphen. So that should work properly when I paste it in directly so I'll get rid of that now I don't need it. anything left on there and I'll get rid of that tab back here so let's see we've got clip art I was going to enable templates so I'll put that in debug So I don't know what they are. We have got a telepathy, uh, a couple of telepathy packages, but I'm not sure what that is. So I think that might be sufficient. The rest has to do with the actual libraries got installed. So whether any of them need to be specified or not, I don't know. But let's try this command line now. Let's copy it all and see if it runs. Oops. And if it does, whether it accepts everything we've given it. So no, there's plugins is still. Yeah, that's been converted. So now let's copy that again. Paste it in again. Right, so it doesn't like something here. So enchant is required. by something and unfortunately it doesn't tell us right libxslt is what we haven't got and I think that's for that xsl fo so I'm going to delete that for a start let's 
put that back in. All right, it's still complaining. Have we installed enchants? Let's have a look. Oh yes, we have, so that's not the problem. So for Billy we've got Glib we've got G thread. No, we haven't got that one. So I wonder what would be stopping that. Let's take off well, the grammar I'm not sure about, so let's remove that. Oh, it's, it is Enchant that it's complaining about. Package Enchant. Right, I think probably the best thing to do is to remove these and add them one by one. So I'll leave an empty package, see how that compiles. Right, so it's one of the enable options that I've added. So let's see which one of them it doesn't like. Right now it could be that it's the enable plugins it doesn't like. Right now it's this spell which is a bit of a shame because this is a, a word processor. So let's put back in the clip art and templates to see if that compiles. It seems to be, yeah. So let's see if G thread is in the book. No, it's not. So that's something I'm going to have to miss completely. So, yeah, clip art and templates have been enabled now. Let's try the plugin. So, by default, it's given us open document and open XML. Um, so let's Add in, well, let's add in all the ones we wanted uh, originally. Let's see what we, what errors we get then. So lib grammar it doesn't like, so let's get rid of that. I didn't think it would like that one. Okay, so it looks like the rest of them are okay. So there's a chance there are other plugins that you might want to try. I'm surprised about that XSL FO, unless that is to do with XSL, i.e. Um, style sheets rather than Excel documents, um, as I thought it might be. Um, then that should work. So the real test would be make now. If make fails, then obviously one of these uh, plugins is causing the problem. So let's start building that and wait for it to finish.
has actually failed. Um, it can't find gdib.h for some reason. It looks like it's trying to build RSVG. So why that is, I don't know. It should be on there. Uh, where is uh, it's in there? So I'm not sure why gdib is missing. So there it is. Um, so let's rerun the configure command with help and put through include in case we need to specify. Uh, I'm not sure why that's not being found either. So let, we'll have to start this from the beginning, I think. It'll be safest, every word. Three. So I'll copy that configure command again. I'll add in this to see if it makes any difference. I mean, it should already know about that include directory. Uh, include there, that should be it. Right, so let's have another go. Okay, so that's still failed. So what I'm going to do is to reconfigure again and remove the RSVG because there's obviously something not quite right there. Um, it could be it needs another dependency related to RSVG or um, something's broken. I don't know, some configuration. I don't know. It would need a, a bit of investigation if that was important. 
So I'm going to attempt to reconfigure here and then rebuild. Uh, it could fail in the same way, which means I'll have to start again. And that's the problem with doing things that aren't in the book. You're at your own mercy, basically, uh, your own knowledge and what you what chances you take on um, doing that's different from the book, basically. So it looks like it's just catching up to where it broke before. Looks like it might be carrying on, I'm not quite sure. Oh yes, oh so it's right at the end it did it. It must be linking I guess. So that has actually now built with that new configuration. So I think probably happy with that. Um So, I think if we do make install, and it looks like this part of the book hasn't been updated either. It's mentioning, um, the ver oh, I see the version expands to 301 and not 302. And I think the version is 302. It's quite confusing because there's all these different versions. Yeah, it's 302 is the version of the documents. But the program's 305 and the documents expand to 301. So it's very confusing. So let's become root and expand and install. Sorry, no, we don't need to be root to do this. Expand and install the documents.
Right, that's done. That did quite a lot. So I don't know if it's going through and processing documents for the plugins that were selectively installed. Um, seems to be doing quite a bit of processing there. So let's now install. And that's the documents done. Um, this command creates a source for changes in dependency and chance. Okay, they gave an example here actually, I didn't see this. Collab, OpenXL, GOffice and Grammar. Okay, so maybe we could have chosen some of them as well by the looks of it. Although OpenXML did was a default. Um, so it's just maybe Collab and GOffice I didn't add in. So that's uh, up to you if you, I'm not going to rebuild it to include those, but I would do normally if I wanted it. Uh, so it's up to you if you wanted to do that. So let's try that out. It should be hopefully under Office. And there it is. And that's it. Yep, just simple. What's well, so simple? Word processor, it's probably, um, I imagine, fairly full featured. Yep, seems to be lots of options there. And as you saw, it seems to be part of. Oh, I see, that's gone behind now, is it? Yeah. That wasn't modal. It seems to be part of a GNOME Office application. So that's not actually producing. Oh, all oh right, it's taking us to a web page. Okay. So, yep, that's every word done. Let's shut that down. Close without saving. So now let's go to Gnumeric, which is a I think I believe it's a gnome based spreadsheet. So there's no dependencies for this. Let's fetch the package. Um, we can add in this option to enable PDF docs as we have latex. So let's copy the configure command and add in enable PDF docs. And did not find a suitable tool for generating portable document format from docbook XML aborting. Uh, right, okay, and these are separate package DB Latex for the looks of it, which is outside of the book. So let's rerun that without. So that's better. So it looks like there's a few extra dependencies there, but they're not catered for in BLFS. So let's build that and wait for it to finish. Right, so that's done. Let's now install it. Looks like we test it after it's installed.
let's run the tests. So it's going to take a few minutes for the looks of it to complete. Right, so that has tested, all passed. So let's tidy that up. I need to add it to the spreadsheet. And it's done. So let's find the next one. So we've got graphical web browsers to do. So I'll install each one of these remaining ones that we haven't installed. Epiphany, Firefox and SeaMonkey. So let's start with Epiphany. So there's no extra packages here. Download. And start the installation. So there's no extra options. We we'll just copy and paste this as you see it. This doesn't take long to build. That's done, let's install it. And it says if you installed your package using desktop method to run that. One test would fail if this package is not installed, so it's better to run the test suite after installation, which we've done. So we'll run it using that command. Okay, we've got four failures, location entry test, so there might be something to do with that um, location library that I skipped I'm not sure why the other two have failed and 
can state that others should might fail but as as you've seen i have tried to avoid building certain packages so that could be why it's failed let's run this print error logs okay let's just re redone what we've already seen so let's try running it see if it actually works uh, falcon web must be that one i presume so let's go to linux from scratch uh, let's put, so it hasn't defaulted to https for some reason Yeah, it does look like it's broken. Or at least that part is. So the tabs work. Yeah, it looks like it's trying to load something and that bit's not working. So as to what that is, I don't know. Is there any clues here? I do vaguely remember having a problem installing a browser in one of my builds previously, I can't. I thought it was Seahorse actually. Is it Seahorse? No, not Seahorse. What's it called? Sea Monkey, sorry. Um, I can't remember that I've had any problems with this one, so it does look quite a serious problem. Um, I'm tempted to try and build this again because it didn't take too long. And just see, take a bit more, pay a bit more attention to the output. So your app stream util, that's a package that's not within BLFS. All that looks okay. Yeah, everything looks okay there. Yeah, I can't see that there's anything really wrong with that. Um, let's try reinstalling. The only thing I guess I haven't done is um, to run LD config. Let's try it again now. No, it's still something still broken with it um one thing i haven't done for quite a while i don't know if that would have any effect is to run the remove la file script so let's run that yeah there's loads in there sometimes this can fix builds that don't build and possibly this sort of situation where it's not compiling correctly um, I still don't understand exactly what the implications are of leaving those there, but it does seem to work sometimes. So, once again, I'll try to build this purely because it's a short one. Otherwise, I'll just accept that it's not working. It's not something I'd use. And obviously, if you had the same issues and you wanted it as I would do, you'd have to investigate it further. And it probably involved rebuilding some of the dependencies to get it to work. So once more, let's try it. In fact, what I might do is run it from here. 
Let's see if there's any errors that come up. Web process crashed, so that's why it's not working. Dbus connection, get unique name. All oh, right, so it looks like it's trying to get the Dbus connection. That's failing. And that's why apparently it's not working properly. So it's not actually a problem with the package itself. It's a problem with Dbus or GDbus even. So that's not a direct dependency, unfortunately. You'd have to find out where Dbus comes into this dependency hierarchy to fix that. Um, let's have a go to see if it is possible to fix that. Uh, let's look for Dbus. So there's Dbus itself, which must be working because we've got a graphical session and other things seem to be working okay. Dbus mock, Dbus glib, so it could be that package that needs to be rebuilt. Possibly that one. Poss oh, that's Qt related, so I doubt if it's that one. So I wonder if it's worth rebuilding that first of all, Dbus glib. Dbus glib. That requires Dbus and glib. I guess glib must be working because Um, it's a file that seems to be used by most things, so let's get a new tab. And this is the problem with BLFS, is knowing what order to build packages in and when to rebuild packages. Um, and it tends to be my idea that Rebuild a package if you're unsure, but be aware that rebuilding might affect something else. So it could be what's happened here. Um, so dbus glib. Okay, so it looks like just one test run there, but it passed. So let's reinstall this. So I don't know if rerunning Epiphany would help fix it. No, it's still crashing. Um, there was one other, let's try that one possibly. XDG Dbus proxy. Again, it requires, I mean, it could be possible that GLib might need rebuilding. It's just a possibility. So I'll just copy and paste this one. That these look so small, I can't imagine these are the ones that are causing the problem. I'm just wondering if I should reinstall glib. No, that's still failing. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, let's have a go at GW. It shouldn't take too long. So there it is there. So let's put the patch in. So this is talking about older headers, so we won't have that because we're building with the same um, version. Let's make the build directory and copy the these, and I can't remember if there's anything to change here now. Man equals true, we're doing that, so no, there's nothing to change, which is good in a way, because it could indicate a, an option that I added to the Mesons setup, but as being there's nothing to change, it does mean we're building it exactly the same way as it was built before. So, have a quick look, sysprof's not enabled, though it could be. Uh, I'll leave it off and install it as it is in the book. So it does warn about this error occurring, so that's not a problem. So reinstall this, I'll do an LD config when I'm here, come back out and run the tests as a non-root user. So we had one failure, but it does mention that Julib GIO, and there it is, and that is the one I do remember seeing that before. So there's nothing wrong with that build. So let's once more try Epiphany. No, it's still failing, so what I'm going to do is rebuild it once more. If that doesn't work, then, well, I don't know what the problem is with it. Um, I say it will need to be investigated further. So, what have we done here? XDG, need to find Epiphany again. Uh, let's get rid of that. So let's extract so for the final time, regardless of what it whether it's going to work or not. I suppose uh, I don't know if it's worth doing. Uh, I guess I could try it just in case um, is to build it with one ninja job it'll obviously take a little bit longer ninja jobs equals one ninja let's time it yeah it's a lot slower but let's wait for it to build and see if it behaves any differently.
Okay, so it's built and let's install it now. Um, let's do the install on one thread as well in case that has any effect. Uh, Right, sudo su. So that's done. Come back out, run the tests. No, it's still failing the same way, so there's clearly no difference. And we've got the same error again. So, yeah, unfortunate that I can't get that to work. Um, right, so let's now shut that down. Back to the spreadsheet. Next one we need to do is uh, Firefox next. Uh, Firefox. Oh, well, that's a big download. Right, what I might do is to get that downloading. That's going to take a while. And I'll build SeaMonkey next. As I believe that's quite a small, oh, that's, still, that's quite a sizable chunk as well. Uh, let's get that one downloading as well. Um, what else can we do? Let's have a look at these. That's a mail client. I guess we could install that. Yeah, let's do that. That should be small, shouldn't it? Yeah, three megs. So I'm gonna download the package and the patch when it comes up. And it looks like we've got depends two dependencies for this, three, four dependencies. Okay, let's do them. So G mime. that tab okay so build it and test it Looks all okay. Yep, it says pass at the top there. And install. So next we've got comp face. Download. Let's tidy up first. So it looks like a straightforward package to build and install. That's done. And GTK source view. Down 
load it. All right, we've got two versions. I thought we'd already installed this, but this is version three, an older version. Okay, so looks like just copy and paste again. Tests, yep, that's all okay. Install, and it's done. And proc mail. So, proc mail. Download. And we've got patch. So it looks like we just, as the root user, put those commands in. And it looks like that's done. Yeah, there's no configuration, so we can tidy up. Uh, did I put that in? Yes. So now we can build Balsa. So I've already downloaded this. Patch program and configure we've got some options here so if you want the HTML renderer to be built verify you have the right so that might be a good idea with a mail client so we'll remove that camera support we've got that comp face we just built GCR, we've got that I believe, GSS I don't think we've got support for that, LDAP I think we've got support, LibSecret sounds like a good one, and SQLite. So that looks good. So GTK source view is defaulted to off. Um, oh, source view that is, isn't it? Source view. But did we just install that? Yeah. Let's try putting in with GTK source view in that case. Source view 4. We install version 3. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe that's a dependency that's out of date and needs to be updated, possibly. Um, or let's put 3 in. It seemed to accept that. No, it didn't. So it must have ignored it at the beginning. It may have said it didn't recognize it. Yeah, unrecognized option, GTK source view. And in fact, if we do a help, uh, grep 
GTK. Oh no, it does say GTK source view three. So has the program been updated but not the instructions and then therefore the BLFS book there's an anomaly there. Maybe that's why they haven't mentioned it. So that's interesting. So let's run that once more, make sure it's all correct. Yeah. So I'll remove that, rerun the config, we're building without the source view after all that. And we can start the build with make. So that's done. Let's make install. And that's bolts are done. Uh, did I put it in there? No, I didn't. So let's clear that down and try and run that. Is that going to be under Office? Um, don't even know what it's called. Um, also mail clients, right, there we go. Right, so that seems to have worked. Yeah, it's asking for some details. Okay, so I'm going to cancel that. I'm not going to set this up because I haven't got an account to put in. So that's bolster done. Right, let's do CMonkey down. Looks like the downloads have finished. Um, it's a browser suite, a descendant of Netscape. It includes a browser composed of mail news clients and IRC. It's a community driven follow on from Mozilla application suite. Create after Mozilla decide to focus on separate applications. Right, so we've got some dependencies to install. So it looks like an older version of Autoconf. So let's download that. Put that in. A patch we need to put in as well. Oops. So that send link's now identified that I've got a email client, so that's set itself up automatically as well, so that's good. So that's done. Let's extract autoconf 2.13. There's no additional options, so let's just copy and paste this as it is. And that's made. Let's make a check. So they have all passes, 253, that's good. So time to install. Paste that in and that's done. Shut that down and we'll see bind gen. So let's save that. Copy the name of the package to the spreadsheet. Internet connections needed for building, so obviously downloads 
as it crates, I think they call it for rust. So cargo release is the command to build this. That's done, let's run the tests. Yeah, when it says three and nine to fail, we've got that. So let's just install that now. Uh, oh, what did I do that for? And that's done by the looks of it. it didn't put output anything. But there's the binary, so that's fine. Uh, Valgrinder wireless tools, not installing them, so let's extract the SeaMonkey package after we've tidied this up. Okay, it says in the book that the source tarball is different from the extracted directory, so take note of that. So installation of CMonkey, the configuration of CMonkey is accomplished by creating a mozconfig file containing the desired configuration options. The default mozconfig is created below. See the entire list of available configuration options and a brief description of each one issue configure help. You may also wish to review the entire file and comment any other desired options. So let's copy this. Paste that in. So let's now edit it. And see if there's anything you want to change. If you install Dbus Julia, comment out this line. Now it could be that that is broken and that was causing Epiphany to fail. So I'll take a chance that we have got it installed correctly. And if CMonkey fails, then I'll rebuild it and remove that comment so that it doesn't use Dbus. So we haven't got. Wi-Fi wireless tool, so we'll leave that as it is. Unspell startup notification. I think we've got the startup notification. Yeah, so we can remove that one. Unspell, I'm not sure about. No, we haven't got that, so we'll leave that one. We've got Pulse Audio. We've got Alsa Lib as well, but it looks like it prefers Pulse Audio. Gconf, I think we've got. Yep. We've 
we've got all of those. Just so, yeah, we don't want debug symbols. Comment this if you know your machine is not affected. Well, let's try that. Uh, it clearly has a performance implication, I imagine. Yeah, startup time and shrinks the library. So failed installed after successful builds. Right, so that's if the install fails. See, monkey has additional features not turned on by default, such as IC client code and DOM. Comments out if you do not decide the features. Let's leave them in. And benefactors has recommend not changing anything below. So basically adjust those at your own peril. Uh, so let's now save that. And we're not in Troot, so we'll ignore that. Fix a problem with the bundle distro Python module. Compulsory monkey with the following command. So I'm going to do these one at a time. As this is a bigger package, it's more likely to go wrong. And if it is going to go wrong, I want to see what the output is of any command. So it looks like the configurations worked. Let's now run the build. And wait for it to complete.
Right, well, those options have clearly allowed the build to complete successfully. So the next test is as to whether it will install correctly. So let's try these commands here. I'm not sure if that's actually completed. It does say install complete there, but the prompt hasn't come back. It seems to have hanged. Yeah, it's still running there, that process there, 28699 by the looks of it. So, all oh right, it did take, didn't seem to do anything on the hard disk light, it was, wasn't flashing, uh, but got there eventually. So that has installed, so that's good. So next thing is to just do these two commands, and then we can try it out. There's no testing by the looks of it. Oh, um, if you use a desktop environment like Noma KDE, right, yes, we need to do this really, or else it probably won't appear in the menu. So let's do those two. And now let's see if it's there. There it is there, the icon hasn't come up yet. Right, so clearly it's not a debus problem with Epiphany because this has started. Um, Let's uncheck those. Um, it's come up with a page, yes, directly off the internet. It's not a local page. So, yes, the problems with Epiphany are clearly to do with the package itself, or, or, or it indicates more that it's to do with the package itself. It's definitely not to do with the bus. Um, let's get a new tab and actually manually go to a web page and yes it's come up straight away so it's clearly not a problem with dbus or it doesn't appear to be so um, let's load up the book here. Yeah, it's rendering obviously different, it's using different fonts, but it clearly works okay. Um, and let's try a bit more of a harder test. Let's go to YouTube. Let's go to a browser. Yep, there's an ad there. I can hear the sound in the background. So that's definitely working okay. So that's fine. Uh, let's save and close. So let's tidy that up. And add that to the browser. Uh, to the spreadsheet, sorry. See monkey and close that down and now we'll have a go at Firefox. Uh, oops, wrong window, save that one instead. Uh, let's get rid of that.
so we need to download the correct one here because one was used for javascript i think it was one of the javascript engines so it's 115 we want so this looks like it takes about twice as long as c monkey did So although upstream prefer to use Pulse Audio for the moment, ours can still be used. Both may need runtime configuration to get sound working. There's no dependencies to set. Oh, that's one thing I wanted to do with the C monkey was to keep the configuration file. Never mind. Um, let's see if I can quickly edit that to the changes that I used and save it. new document paste that in not that one copy paste uh, let's change the font on this uh, settings configure and I want a monospace one let's have deja vu sans Shiny monospaced, yeah. Okay. Right, that's better. So I Disabled that. I'm not in Vim, and I. I disabled that one. Left that disabled. I took out startup notification and pulse audio, and I think that was it. Oh, I took this out, didn't I? That clearly worked. Yeah, and that was it. So if I now save this in the BLFS sources and call it uh, mozconfig and that was for, I'll call it dot C monkey or even better if I call it C monkey dash two dot five three dot seventeen dot moz config okay right so I've extracted Firefox that's quite a huge package as you saw that's C monkey and let's copy copy the Firefox moz config and it's similar to what it said for CMonkey, it says you can run a command to get more options. But I think I'll play it safe. And let's use Kate to edit this. As that Vim seems to be playing up. Oh, I wonder why it hasn't come up with the settings that I set. that is there must be some other uh, configuration I need to do maybe to like, do it globally perhaps okay let's set this up for now um, let's try it again oh yeah it's remembered it now maybe it's because I've run it from the command line 
Um, right, so let's have a look. So I want to leave that. These look similar to what they were before. So we don't need that one. Don't want to use Google's geolocation. Again, that's a privacy issue for me. It might be for you. Otherwise, you can uncomment that. Startup notification is required since Firefox 7.8, so we need that. That's why the option's not there anymore. It's just letting you know. Uncomment if you do not have, if you have not installed Pulse Audio, we have. We did say it needs ALSA before, but we found out the Pulse Audio works with SeaMonkey, so we'll leave that. Um, we've got all those. I like Thunderbolt, I don't use using the gold link, can say 4 megabytes installed file, it does not make the build faster. The AV1 has not been installed, so it has. Do not uncomment this if you have FFmpeg installed, we have that as well, so we'll leave it. Enable official branding. Stripping is now enabled by default. Disable debugging, that's good. We can try commenting this out as well. It seemed to be all right. And do not change anything below there. So let's save that. And I'm gonna copy that Moz config in a similar way to Firefox 115. Call it just was config there, like that. I think so. If I do alter it, I'm gonna to have to remember to copy it again. So, we're not using the geolocation APIs. If you are, you need to do this these two commands here, but they are they do belong to Linux from scratch. So you have to bear that in mind if you're repackaging this. So, now let's run this. Put these two environment variables in, run the configure. And run Mac build to compile and wait for that to build.
was around the same time. Uh, SBU wise, it was a note there about it possibly taking, or maybe it was the previous package, but uh, Sea Monkey about it taking a very man, very amount of time because of rust. Um, so I don't think we enabled tests, so there's no point in running that. Um, let's try and see what happens. No, I've been disabled, right? So unfortunately, we can't do any tests. So let's install the package. Uh, let's become SU like that. <coughs> Paste that in. So it looks like it's pausing as Sea Monkey did, so I'll give that a chance to finish in a minute or two. Right, so that's done. So there was some extra command explanations here, but they don't really affect how um, the package was built as such. So, not sure if that needed to be on set to be quite honest, because that was put in on the command line. I think that's only temporary. Or was it an early one? Oh, it was an early one. <coughs> <clears throat> okay, so there's configuration to add it to the desktop for GNOME and KDE. Um, so there's about a neighbouring sound here. So let's see if we start it up, what happens. So there it is there. Uh, I'll go straight to YouTube, I think. It's certainly running a lot faster than Sea Monkey does, so it's obviously optimized a lot more. Um, let's view that. Right, yes, I can hear sound straight away, so it doesn't need to be configured. Um, I don't know if you're picking that up at all. So, yeah, it is working fine. So that is Firefox complete. I added it to this note. Let's paste that in and tidy this up. Um, I copied the Moz config, so I'll just remove the subdirectory and close that down. Um, let's just do image viewer. I've got a few image viewers, so I won't worry about that too much. Um, I think I'll probably just install the odd package that's left. Um, Font Forge. Guess, uh, not really bothers really. Let's do the ones I uh, know about and probably perhaps more useful. Um, Gparted, so it's a graphical 
partition editor, which can be quite useful if you've never heard of this. <clears throat> so there's no um, dependency specifically apart from um, specific file system utilities which it uses. So the only one we haven't installed is JFS utils. So although it's a runtime environment, uh, yeah, runtime dependency. Let's install it now. Um, needs JFS file system support in the kernel. So um, let's deal with that first. So let's become root. Config. Okay, this sometimes happens in some of the terminals um, where the colors don't get rendered properly. I'm not sure if it's LX terminal in this case that's doing it. Let's um, start off a console session and try it here. It might be LX terminal. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Yes, it is. You can see it's clearly working okay here. So it's obviously some capability of LX terminals, not as fully featured as a console is. Um, so we need to go to file systems and then JFS file system support. I'll add that in as a module, I think. Uh, no, maybe not. Let's build it in. POSIX, we'll add that in. And I think that would be sufficient. So make to build it. So that's done. I'll run my install script to install it and that's completed. So I'll come out of that. I uh, didn't need to actually, did I? It's just a spreadsheet that gets a bit funny. Um, uh, system and external. Let's boot it up again. So it's ready for us when we return. So I need to reboot to use that new kernel. So I'll just uh, restart from here. Okay, I'll try Epiphany once more in case rebooting has made any differences after we've installed. No, it's still failing. So it's definitely, definitely broken. So sources BLFS. Let's now build JFS utils. Oh, let's get this spreadsheet up. So this is JFS Utils. Download the package and save the patch. Extract it. So I put the patch in and 
build it with these commands. And install when that's done. So it's not needed if you don't use JFS utils, but I'm just adding it in for completeness. Uh, root periods is required to run GPARTED. First any further. So let's install SSH ask pass because it will, if you run it as an ordinary user, ask for root password to make changes. So let's put that in next and download it. All oh, right, it's open SSH, it's part of right, okay. So we've already got that, so let's extract open SSH. So CD into contrib and make gnome SSH ask pass. I think there's an equivalent for KDE actually called ksudo. Um, so whether that would, well, whether it's installed by default or not, it might be a, one of those separate packages. As I say, a lot of them are very useful that aren't part of the standard build. Um, so now we need to become root and install it. Configuration, add that to the sudo conf. So that should be configured if it needs to be used. So now we should be ready to build and when it's installed, use GPARTED. So let's put that in to the spreadsheet and download it. <clears throat> so configure and make uh, let's see what other options there are let's copy that in so we've got known doc util so we can remove that uh, let's put enable doc I presume that will work Disable static, enable X-Roots host, this switch provides an interim workaround to allow GPARTE to run under Wayland using X-Host. Okay, so that might be useful if you're running Wayland. So let's build it. Make check. And install it. And it says we need to run these two commands in now that we've installed ask pass to Allow that to work with the looks of it. So let's become root again. Paste that in. And that should be enough to get it to work. So let's try it. Um, G parted, there it is. Um, I won't actually be able to make any changes, I don't think, because this is the disk that's in use. I might be able to. Oh, it looks like it's only locked the two partitions that are in use. So if I right click this and do new, if I create a little partition at the end, uh, just add it and then apply. Right, looks like it's done it straight away. So those permissions have automatically used root to 
make the changes. It could also be that I've got pseudo access, so I'm not quite sure of how the mechanisms exactly work there, but you can see that it's allowed for the changes which normally would be only open to root. So if that is an issue for you, you may need to understand more closely how the permissions work with this. So that's gparted. Let's move on and is that just a chat client, is it? Yeah, I won't bother installing that. Um, right, I'll do Thunderbird. I imagine that's going to be a big installation. And I'll do transmission as well. So yes, that's a huge download. So let's get that running. Um, I think apart from that, there's only going to be the odd package to install. That's libraries. Um, I'll do Audacious. That's a really good package for playing uh, audio. Uh, M player is a good video player. Um, don't know what trends code is. Let's have a look. Okay, that might be use, useful. I've not used it, so I'm not really sure about it. Um, that's it. There's actually, did I miss your audacious? Uh, audacious. Um, audacity. Is that not part of this anymore? Oh no, it's not anymore. Okay. Which is uh, Audacity is like a uh, a sound wave editor type thing, so that's quite a good package to have, but it's not in here unfortunately. Um, so yeah, I could install these, but I guess like we've done like nearly a thousand packages, you get the idea of how to install them after that that many. So I'll just finish off with these packages. Um, I'll do Thunderbird last because I say it's going to take a while. So I'll do them in this order. So transmission first. It's just a Qt based bit torrent client. So I say I use it every now and then for um, downloading Linux ISO files and I invariably most of the time have one up seeding files uh, for other people. Um, so let's download it. It looks like we've got all the dependencies required. Uh, transmission. Um, I think you have to enable something. Yes, to turn Qt on. So let's start by building it. Or creating a build directory, cmake command. Let's modify that now. Right, the default is to build with Qt. Okay, so that's all right. The default is to build with gtkmm, so we've got that as well. And forces, if Node.js is installed. Okay, well, looks like the defaults might be okay. Let's run that and see what it reports at the end. Well, it doesn't say that it is going to report anything, so... Right, to be sure of this, what I'm going to do is to explicitly add these in because uh, I'm not sure if it might prefer one over the other or or what. So I'm going to be sure that I get both versions by actually specifying what I want. And because this is a bit 
default is to build. Yeah, I'll, I'll do these four as well. Um, just to be sure. And put this in as well. Forces a rebuild of. Default is to build it. Yeah, okay. So let's put on with that as well. Oh, it looks like it didn't change anything. So it looks like those defaults, the ones you expect it to be configured, did actually configure. So that's okay. So let's build this. Right, so that's done. Let's now install. And it says that a PNG file seems to be missing, so let's become root and create that. So let's look for this now. Uh, transmission for some reason the QT one hasn't got an icon so let's just start local session so yes this is the main screen and looks all okay let's see the difference between this and the GTK version oh the icons come up now so it doesn't look much different just slightly different Appears to be all okay. So let's put that in. And save that. And audacious. So we've got no dependencies to do so let's build it uh, let's download it and some plugins and extract Audacious 4 so let's create the build directory and the meson setup command and let's look to see what other options there are so build stamp depends on the given text the version string gtk3 equals true Valgrind, we don't want that, so it looks like we don't need to change anything there. Ninja to build. Uh, 
and install the package. Oh, not like that. Like that. And then we can build the plugins like this. Okay, and finally install those plugins. So that's done. So let's look for that uh, multimedia, I imagine. Yep, there it is. Um, this can actually be changed to look. like the old Winamp. Um, I think it's this package anyway, this looks completely different. I can't remember how to Running in QT mode. Oh, is it this bit here? Yes, yeah, this bit. That's the one. Yeah, so if you can see, it looks, if, if you've ever seen Winamp, it's a tiny little player, just keeps out of the way, but it's still uh, very usable. You have to right click on it to get a menu, and you have to decide what you want by selecting. the. Um, options so i generally tend to have just those three up at the side of the screen oh, where's that gone uh, oh it's the corner i need to select so you get the list of all your tracks you want to listen to there um, you can even change this to look like Um, the Winamp, so that's that theme, icon theme native flat, oh the skin, that's it, uh, is it classic, no, tiny player, um, maybe it's another plug-in to, oh yeah, that, that's the one I normally have, but I think you can, Actually, I think there is a skin you can add in, so it does look, this looks more like the old Winamp, but you can actually make it look even more like Winamp with the colours and so on. Um, but that may be a separate skin to download, I, I can't really remember, but as you see, that's uh, on its own. A nice little player that doesn't take up too much space. So, that's that. Um, I'll pin that actually. So that's Audacious. Uh, let's do M player now. Is there any other dependencies for this? No. So let's get the package. and a couple of patches. Oh, uh, we've already got that patch. I'll just... Right, okay. Did I download the right one then? Yeah, okay. See the ones, uh, oh, I see an FFmpeg patch. And then there's a skin we can download here. And there's alternative ones to download here as well. 
And it says skins are only required in order to use the GTK plus two interface. So let's extract M player, the capital M, capital MP. Yep. So we'll apply these patches. Right, I wondered if that would work. And we would have had that FFmpeg patch installed anyway, yeah. So I'm not quite sure. There's no information about how this should be built. We are at the beginning. So I'm not sure about that second one. But let's copy the configure command. Paste that in. Let's look at any other options that we mentioned. So we want the GUI, we want the menu, CPU detection. System version, okay. So language doc equals lang. I will need to do a help on that. So configure help. Right, here they are. In all cases it's English, so we can put in EN. I thought it might have ENGB, but um, for English it looks like it's not really necessary to specify the language, but I'll do so. And it's the same for the man pages. I mean, it could be that it picks this up automatically. EN and messages. Oops, put that in the wrong place. And just language for the default language used. Specific options override language, and it says you can pass a list with white spaces. And yeah, the fallback is English, so I probably just specified something that's the default anyway there. So let's go with that. And build it. <coughs> To make some HTML documentation and then install and in, all right there's an error there it's to do with FFmpeg strangely enough So something make installers failed. Yes, it is. How peculiar. Right, let's start this again. <clears throat> So the first patch is fine. I presume this means that I don't know patch too well, but it will operate on the FFM MPEG directory. Oh, I see it didn't find the patch. Yeah. 
Yes, it's there. Oh, I don't understand that. FFmpeg dash six dot zero hyphen bin utils underscore two dot four one dash one dot patch. Hmm, how strange. Does that need another layer in there? Yes, it does. Oh, oh, it doesn't make sense like that. Clearly, patch changes directory to ffmpeg and then uses the string you pass as the patch, but I don't know why that isn't like that in the instructions. So, that's something that needs to be resolved. Um, anyway. That should hopefully install now when we compile it. So let's find the configure command again. And build the package. Right, yeah, this looks like it is compiling FFmpeg, or parts of it at least. It's taking a lot longer to compile. Okay, uh, let's build the documentation and attempt to reinstall it again. We've any luck at work this time? Yes, it has worked straight away. And install documentation that we built. You'll only need codex conf if you want to change its properties as the main binary contains an internal copy of it. I'm trying to change the Mexico. If necessary, create as a file. So we can create that. And we can install all the conf files into M MPEG, uh, mplayer. So they're visible. Skin installation. Let's put the skin in that we downloaded. And we need to update the icon cache. Oops, there's my mouse going funny again. We need to update the icon cache. So we'll put these two commands in. And that should be it. So we should have the GUI front end for M player. There it is there. Um, so we need to find some media. Uh, seem to remember there was in user share was it uh, MKV uh, was it test no Wasn't it MKV? Was it MP4 then, maybe? 
MP4. Um, Oh, I can't remember. Um, well, anyway, it's loaded up okay. We've got a little uh, control panel here to control the media. So that should be okay. So that's M player. Uh, Next, I'm going to do Thunderbird. So, hopefully, this looks like it's downloaded. There's no more dependencies that I want to download. So, let's start by extracting it. Okay, so that's extracted. Let's put that in there and save it. So we've got another MOS config file to edit. Let's paste that in. Uh, let's use Kate again. Uh, yeah, it was Kate, wasn't it? <clears throat> so we haven't got wireless so we'll leave that we have installed pulse audio we've got those dependencies we can comment out the elf hack because it doesn't seem to cause a problem and that's it don't change anything else below there so let's save that quit Put a set in to help building with GCC 13. We're not compiling to root, so let's export these two variables and run configure. Let's see how long this takes this package. So it's roughly the same as. Firefox, I think. Okay, so let's start the build.
Okay, so that's finished building. All successful by the looks of it, so I'm going to install the package. Okay, that's finished. So just need to unset these environment variables. Go on to configuration. There's information there about configuring it. Uh, let's create a desktop item. And then you uh, desktop configuration file. Paste that in, and that should be complete now. So I'll just start it up to test it. Uh, would it be here? Yeah, Thunderbird. So the icon hasn't appeared yet. So you can't do much else at the initial um, run because you need to set up uh, some information. I guess you can put some stuff here. Uh, time trying to log on yeah it is unfortunately so can't do much else than that um, but this is the basic interface here there's a calendar and notes and so on looks like there's a chat client there as well built in so that's that that looks all okay tidy up Saved. Right, so what I'm going to do now is close down Thunderbird. I'll just do another quick look to see if there's nothing else that I really want to install. Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. There's another PDF viewer there by the looks of it, but uh, I'm not going to bother with that. So overall, if we quickly look through the BLFS book, you can see that probably just about 90% maybe of it has been installed. Um, yeah, maybe 85, 90% of it is quite, quite a lot of it. Um, and in total, there's been, oh, still got Mercurial, hasn't been tidied up. Oh, it's a hidden directory though, that's interesting. I wonder why. Oh no, it's the build directory hasn't been tidied up. Okay. So yeah, there's 14 gigabytes of source files, um, and in total we've used about 55 gigabytes of disk space. So it's quite a huge install. If you take off the source, okay, that leaves about um, 40 gigabytes so it's still quite big uh, bear in mind we've been installing documentation so um, that explains its its size um, yeah so what I'm going to do now is to build um, let's get rid of that let's build a couple of games there's no games catcher in the BLFS book and to some people that might not be an omission but 
generally with any of these big packages you get games like Gnome, I believe there's a few games that come with the complete package and same with KDE. Um, so I'm going to do two games. Um, one's open source, you download source and compile it, and the other is proprietary, so there's no source code, you just um, download a binary, install it and run it. So the proprietary one's called Factorio. What I'm going to do is start that downloading because it's quite, there's a demo for it. It's quite huge, quite large, and it's just a factory building game where you uh, start off with like raw materials and you just start building basic machines, factories, uh, and just keep building up and improving onto advanced uh, machines. So let's go to the download page and download the demo for Linux. So I'll save that to BLFS. Um, and while that's downloading, I'll download the other one, which will be a little bit smaller. We can build that while Factorio is downloading. So it's called Wesnoth or the uh, battle for Wesnoth. That's the home page there, wesnoth.org. And probably have to go to, uh, where does that go? Um, I imagine if I downloaded that, it will, yeah, it's downloading a flat hub. We want the source code. So let's see if we can find. Yeah, that's. Probably need to go to development source. There we go. So it's taken us to Source Forge. So let's go back. Open this in another tab. And let's check take a look at the checksums. Okay, there's the file. Let's save that. Checksums and other downloads. So I don't know if there's any information on here about compiling. So I might have to look inside the, let's have a look at the fact. Looks like it's got information. Oh, that's for a server. No, so we'll have to look at the um, package when we've extracted it to see what information is there. As you can see, it's got the uh, information about the operating system. So by default, it's Ubuntu, but because we're building from source, you can effectively build for any distribution from source. Um, so it hasn't got particularly demanding requirements. So let's see how these downloads are going. All right, funnily enough, Wesnoth's the one that's going to take the longest because it's coming down slow. Let me pause this one. Right, it's speeding up now. Yeah, it says it's coming down at 3 megabits per second, so it should be just a minute or two now.
Okay, so that finished downloading. I'll let the other one carry on in the background. Uh, so now let's extract what is north. change into it and yeah, let's see what we've got so there's an install file MD I think is marked down so let's use Kate to view that it should render it correctly yes it has done so West North requires a compiler with sufficient C++ 17 support such as GCC 7 and later or a version of CLang with equivalent support. You'll need to have these libraries and their development headers installed in order to build Wes Wesnos. So, um, as I remember from when I've built this before, I think generally the only two things I need now are these two packages. They're not part of the default SDL2 library. Um, And because of the way things are named, you could assume quite easily this is just a, like a plugin or a sub a part of the sub project of SDL2. Um, and I wouldn't know how to find out what parts of Boost have been installed. I assume, just assume it's everything. So, probably the best way um, is to um, try configuring it. So is this for Linux first one? No, just prerequisites, build environment. All oh, right, Unix like platforms, scones and C make required, get text. So scones build it says here. So it looks like we just type in scones. I'm not seeing right there. Scones takes a prefix option. Or we can use CMake. So this is similar to what we've done before. Um, so we'll build it out of source as that's what we've always done install it with that to make build options you can pass options to the command line I've used CC make or CMake make GUI front ends which display all options and their cache values on a console alright oh, I didn't know that so that could be quite useful so let's make the build directory first put that in and now let's run this CMake GUI to see what options there are um, build options so it says here some of the most important follow oh, this is not easy to read that's a bit better Right, so let's, uh, is this showing the options? Right, I don't know how to use this, so I'm not going to bother using that. I'm just going to take a clue from these options here. So let's copy that next, paste that in, and see what we've got here prefix so we can set a prefix so oops I presume 
we can just put in forward slash user there to install it in the system. Um, do we need minus D with these? Probably do actually. Minus D. Enable NLS. Needs a Boolean, so I presume that's going to be true. Strict compilation. So I'll ignore that because it says primarily for developers. Preferences directory. Specify which compiler to use. CXX flags. Enable LTO. Uh, generally, although it takes longer to compile, it's supposed to make the binary faster. So you might want to use that. Um, enable for verbose compilation. Enable strict compilation. Um, presume that's just uh, to show the differences. Enables compiling multiple threads. So actually, it's a make option. So I presume we don't need that. So I'm going to try and install with those options and see if they work so required package is not found like i said this stl2 image is required so let's see if we can find that now as i remember it's all on the same website so if we go to beyond linux from scratch look for stl2 bring that up and go to this address here. If we copy this, uh, open link in new tab. Oh, it's the whole link, isn't it? Let's do that again. Open. All right, let's do a search. I'll oh, go to web address. Let's try that. Yep, that's it. So STL releases and we're on 2.28.2 we want. So these are newer versions 2.28.4. So we need to get an earlier version. Uh, let's go to tags. So this is still only STL, not STL image. So we need to find out about this STL image there, right? Okay. And it doesn't look like there's any releases for this. So we'll need to copy the link address. And let's open a new tab. And do w get paste that address. I'm going to change main.zip to sdl underscore image. Uh, oh no, it's going to be the latest version actually, isn't it? Um, Now, let's do 3.0. This doesn't follow the same versioning by the looks of it. Oh, releases. Here we go. This is what I want. Tags. Right, yeah, it looks like it's different. That's 2.28.2. Right, so the latest was released in February. So this is the one I want. All oh, right, this is it. Uh, so we want to download tar.gz. 
So I'll just click on that. I thought I might have to download this manually. And hopefully there's a signature file there. Um, oh, so this might actually be the binaries, come to think of it. Uh, let's extract it. Still to, to underscore image. Right, that does look like source code, so I don't know why it's got separate um, download. Image release 2.63. Let's download that as well and see what the difference is. STL, what was that called? Oh, just STL image. They're slightly different. Um, I guess it's going to be the one that says SDL2, so I'll take a punt with that one. Not quite sure what that is about. It's not version, so it could be just the latest. So let's change into SDL2 underscore image. Let's take a look to see what the install instructions are. Oh, here there's an install.sh there. Let's see what that's got in it. Quite a lot. Let's look at readme.txt. Looks like we use CMake to build it again. Um, so I think CMake lists compile. Let's have a look at the install script. I think what's probably best to do is to look at the instructions for SDL in the Beyond Linux from Scratch book <clears throat> and use that as a hint for building because I imagine it's going to be pretty much the same. So it uses configure. We've got a configure there as well. So let's try this and put in help as well in case there's anything else. You might want to use. So it looks like all these image formats are used. So I don't think there's anything wrong with just putting that command in like that. So it's warned us that JXL library is not available and that it's disabled it. So it looks like it's found all those graphics libraries that are appropriate. So let's now run make. Let's see if there is documents like this for SDL2. No, there isn't. There's no directory. 
called docks so we'll move straight on to make install sudo minus e make install and looks like there may be some possibly static libraries so let's look for them lib stl to yes there is underscore image star dot a so it looks like there's just that one so let's move that that's the root and um, again, I don't know if there's individual tests, but I'm not going to run them. Looks like there might be, because I wouldn't know what to do. So hopefully that's SDL image done, SDL2 image. Let's now rerun the configure, see if it complains with the same error. No, now it's complaining about SDL2 mixer, which is the other one I said that may be a problem. So let's go back. and look for STL2 mixer there it is there, so let's go into that one there and then go to the releases, so again the latest releases from February and again we'll download that one there for the source Go back here, sdl2 underscore mixer. Uh, right, I downloaded the signature. I don't think I downloaded the signature for the other one in the end, did I? Okay, it's a signature file, so I'll, I'll remove that. Um, so it's actually that one was the one I want. So I think the best thing to do with this again is to use the same instructions as before. They seem to work okay. Let's do prefix user and help again. So again, it looks like most things are enabled. Looks like shared libraries are enabled as well by default. So that's probably what we want. So again, I'll accept the defaults. So it's saying that you can't find some libraries like the Opus library, which is unusual because we have got low Opus installed, but it's probably because the headers are missing. So let's build it. Okay, and install. And again, let's remove from user lib the stl2 underscore mixer and yes there's one static file there dot a and that's it so let's tidy that up go back to this tab rerun the CMake configure, you can see it's carried on and it's actually completed. So all those other requirements have actually been installed as part of um oh have I closed down the I oh know it's there. 
Oh, that's the icon there. Uh, that's the one I want. So all these others have already been installed, processing the rest of the BLFS book. So that's all right. So all we need to do now is to do make. And I'll time and see how long it takes. I think it takes a few minutes. It's a, a reasonable build. It's not quick, but it's certainly not long. Well, unusually we've got an error at the end of that, but it seemed to nearly complete. Um, on the linking it seemed to have failed. Error. That's a shame because I've never had this fail before and I, I'm not sure what to do with this now. Um, something to do is get text. Verbal expression. Right, I did turn on an LS option, so I wonder if that's the thing to do, maybe to turn it off, as I don't know how to fix this. Um, so I'll try that, I think. So let's turn that off. Oh, there's also the LTO, that can sometimes cause compile problems. Uh, 
Looks like it's carrying on with the build, that's interesting. Yeah, it's not going to work. It's very interesting because I thought just deleting the build would be sufficient to rebuild this and it's clearly not. So I'm not going to abandon that. Extract Wesnoth again. change into it and to be safe I'm going to just build with even without LTO because I'm not sure uh, if that would affect anything and rebuild it and wait for it again.
Okay, that seems to have failed again, so uh, I'm not sure why this is failing. Um, never ever had this problem before. With Wesnor, so it's a bit, bit unfortunate. Um, let's try building with scones. See how that goes. So it looks like we just type scones, we'll time this, and wait for it to build.
Okay, that looks like that's failed again in the same way, and it's something to do with get text for some reason. Uh, and also that compiled using scones um, only ran on one thread, which is why it took so long. So as I've got the same error, I'm going to go back to the CMake way of building. So I'm going to move West North again, extract it again. So there's nothing mentioned in the prerequisites about get text. Are you obviously working session GNU get text? So is it implying that GNU get text is not working? Let's have a look at the help at the bottom again. So that's the only mention of get text in the help. Um, can disable the multiplayer server, I guess. Um, I'll try and set NLS to false to see if that makes a difference. It could be that... Oh, I wonder if it's the UTF-8 again that's causing the issue, come to think of it. Uh, so let's put that back as true. And so export lang equals en underscore gb dot ISO eight five nine one right so let's try it building like that uh, CD build first Oh, minus D, enable server. Right, this should be quicker this time because it was building on multiple cores with CMake.
Okay, that still failed, so I really don't know why that is. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know if exporting LC all would help as well. No, it's still getting an error. Um, so whether... I don't know when the latest release of Where's North, whether this get text is too new, whether there's a problem with the version of GCC. That could be an issue. Um, looks like we've downloaded the latest development version which is even newer so that shouldn't be a problem um, oh no we downloaded the stable version actually I wonder if we should download the development version if see if there's any more success with that So log back in as kind of text again just to reset those settings. As they're probably not making blind bit of difference. So let's wait for this download to finish. Okay, so that is downloaded. So what I'm going to do next is to extract that newer version. Um,
and let's change into that and rerun the CMake. Right, it's not going to be in here now, is it? So um, let's echo lang and I'll set lang and LC all back to this in the previous login. Probably the easiest way to do this. So change back to Wesnoth 17, uh, make a build directory, change into it, recall the CMake. What's happened there? CMake. and build it again. Okay, it looks like this linking is working. So obviously it was the previous stable version that maybe wasn't compatible with the latest get text. Uh, yeah, this is taking a lot longer than before, so it's looking promising. Yep, that's all complete. So that is obviously the reason why it was failing. So I'll do the install now. Um, just make install.
Okay, so that's all built. So we should have it installed here. There it is there with its icon. We can run it. There's some help there, some hints. And basically, if you go through the campaigns, there's some tutorials. And there's multiplayer games there. And I can hear the sound as well, so the sound is working. So it looks like that has compiled. Obviously, this is not a stable version. It's the latest development version. So unfortunately, it does mean that um, there's a chance that um, it might crash, means it's not stable, but at least you can have a go at it. So I'll quit this game and tidy up. Uh, 1.7 and I'll move on to Factorio which is now downloaded for some reason it wouldn't resume the previous download so I had to uh, set the download off afresh so um, this expands to a directory where you just run the program from so you might want to for example put it in your um, home directory So see it expands to Factorio directory automatically, no version. But wherever you place this top level factor, Factorio directory, it will run from there. And I think the same goes for Windows if you download the Windows version as well. And probably for the Mac as well. So I've changed it to Factorio. That's, that's the home directory, but we need to go to the bin x64 64 bit and the executable is there. So you just type Factorio. There are a load of options for tweaking the, the way the game runs, even for reducing the amount of memory or the graphics it uses. And that's the start up screen. The music's playing, so that's good. I can hear that. Um, you can set settings here if you need to tweak the graphics for example um, turn everything up adjust how much memory is used and so on and start single player new game uh, all you get is the tutorial don't don't be mistaken uh, into believing that the tutorial is just a sort of 20 minute thing it will take several hours to go through the whole of the tutorial it's quite an immersive game um, it can take several hours to uh, several days uh, even to um, go through and to play the game completely um, there's a lot to run so i've turned the settings up and it's slightly sluggish now because this is a built-in graphics card so i'll Reduce them again. Let's put a texture compression down. It shouldn't make that much difference in terms of quality. So yeah, it's a little bit smoother now. So that's Factorian. Like I say, it's basically a case of um, gathering basic resources such as this coal, iron, stone and copper and the trees and building machines from those which allow you to build bigger and faster and better machines to allow you to escape from this alien planet. So that's quite a, a decent game to play. And no, you're not limited normally to that area. Uh, normally the map is unlimited. In fact, it's limited by your processor and the amount of memory you have on the machine. So that's Factorio. As I say, that's proprietary. You'd have to pay for that to get the full version of the game. It's pre-compiled, so there's no compiling, but the point is it runs on BLFS, and more to the point, it runs without any additional packages needing to be installed. So that's quite good. So that's the end of this Beyond Linux and Scratch set of videos. I hope it's been useful and you've enjoyed watching the many hours. And if you have found it useful and enjoyable, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel to get to hear more about what I get up to. Thanks very much. Goodbye.